guys it's April with Cricut Crafting I just wanted to um, show you guys today how I do my wooden signs from start to finish um, I had a request from Heather to show because the slide showed really didn't show enough and it was a little complicated for her on my American flag uh, sign so I'm going to break it down from the very beginning how I achieve getting my sign. So this video may be a little bit long for those of you who are experienced with some of this. You might want to skip ahead a little bit and that's fine. Uh, this is basically for somebody who has never done a sign before and wants to learn. The first thing you want to do is purchase your sign. This sign I believe I got at Michael's. It's an art mine sign. It's I don't think it's going to, it's like a pallet plaque, I think is what they call it. Uh, it just has a small little rope holder on it, uh, which we're going to remove. You can put it back if you're going to use it, or you can replace it with a different type hanger. I'm going to replace mine with a little bit heavier rope because of the type sign that we're doing today. So if you want to do that, you'll need a piece of this or whatever you want to use. Um, for your hanger. You can use the little metal hook hangers and apply those. There are several different ones on the market so whatever you want. These signs aren't heavy. It doesn't take a lot. So those are the main two things that you're going to need to get started. You're also going to need what is called a chip brush. I call these throwaways. It's just a stiff cheap brush. You can get them from Lowe's uh, for about 99 cents. I apologize. My dog is being vocal today. Um, but these are very inexpensive chip brushes. I wash them out and reuse them. Uh, if you're using water-based paint, you can do that. I wouldn't recommend using these for any oil-based or outdoor stains and varnishes because they're just too hard to clean up um, and get right. I also have an old Bob Ross brush here that I use sometimes it's got a little bit uh, softer bristles on it but you don't need that this brush will do I'm just doing it for time purposes so that I don't have to stop and clean up brushes and things of that nature in the middle so you're going to need those I have a little pan here it's a project tray I get from Hobby, uh, not Hobby Lobby but Home Depot and Lowe's you don't need this I don't have a sink in here, so I'm going to be putting just a teeny tiny bit of water in there um, for helping me clean up. So if you see me using that, you don't have to have that, but if you want to do that, if you don't have a sink, it's very easy to do. You're going to need a cloth. It's like t-shirt material. These are rags. They're also sold at Lowe's and Home Depot. You can get a a large pack of them for about three or four bucks um, and I cut these down you don't need anything that big I cut them down to about this size um, and one for each color all right and so make sure you have a couple of those on hand you're going to be using those damp you're not going to be using them dry if you don't want to get your hands dirty you'll need some gloves so you'll want to get yourself some gloves if you don't want to get paint on your hands. We're using water-based products, so getting paint on your hand is not a problem. I'm going to be using the cheap 50-cent apple barrel paints that I get at Walmart. Um, this one's a Anita's acrylic. And I'm be using the three colors today. I'm using an Award Blue. I'm going to be using the Vanilla Cream. And I'm going to be using Tuscan Teal. And we'll get more into how we use those in just a moment. I apologize for that little break. I had to stop the dog from barking and squeaking toys. Next, you're going to need a weeding tool. Um, I have a Cricut one here and a Tim Holtz one. And I like them both. Um, either one will work. Anything that you have, you're just going to need a weeding tool. You'll need a couple of makeup sponges. These are just the basic makeup sponges. Uh, I get mine from the Dollar Tree for this because if you get them at Walmart or somewhere, they're a little pricey. And I throw them away. I don't wash them out. You can wash them out and reuse them. But just a basic makeup sponge, the little triangular ones. 
If you don't have a brayer, don't worry, you don't need one. Some people prefer to use these um, when they're brayering their vinyl and their or their stencil. I myself prefer a squeegee. I will not be using this today, but this is called a brayer. This is a Mod Podge brayer, um, but I'm not going to be using that today. But if you don't have a squeegee, you can use that. To me, the squeegee works a little bit better, and uh, you can get more pressure on it. If you don't have one of these, you can use your extra large scraper, your Cricut scraper, or your small one. They work as well. So, one of those. Uh, a little bit more about the sign. You want to get one that's as smooth as possible. The smoother, the less work that you have. The more rustic you want it to look, we can get a rustic look with a smooth sign. Um, but it's hard to keep your bleeds down. The rougher the sign, the more bleeds you're going to have. But if you're going for rustic, you want bleeds. So, Choose your sign. I prefer the semi-smooth. It has a little, a few little knots, um, a couple of little rough areas, and that's all that I need. I don't like to do a lot of the prep. If your, stuff, uh, your sign is really rough in areas, you'll need a piece of sandpaper. I get this from, in a big pack at the Dollar Tree, and just sand it down some. If it has any kind of finish or coating on it, you'll want to sand that off as well. So you'll need a little bit of sandpaper, and you can use that for touch-ups, too. I prefer these for touch-ups. Uh, they're sanding sticks. Uh, you can get them on Amazon. I'll leave a link for those. Um, they're a little pricey, um, around $20 if you don't have, if your Hobby Lobby or somewhere doesn't carry them. Uh, if you have Prime, they're not very pricey at all because you get the free shipping on there with Amazon. But it comes with a ton of the replacement sanders, uh, and they come in different grits, uh, so you can use these. And they're much easier when you have those small areas to get in right up next to a letter or the edge of something where you had a major bleed that you want to get off of there without really destroying a whole large area of the sign, because you're not going to get in there with the small pieces of sandpaper. So I prefer those, and like I said, I'm just showing you they come in a set, so don't don't say, oh, that's a lot of money for one, because it, it does come in a set with a, a ton of the sanders. So we'll be probably using the 120 or the 240 on that one. I'm going to use a couple of little tools to take the rope off the back. Of course, if you don't want to care about the staples being in the back, you can leave it and just cut it if you're not going to reuse it. Um, and staple gun to put the rope back on there, depending on what kind of hanger, and some scissors just to have handy in case you need them. And last but not least, you'll need a small tape measure. Uh, the first step you want to do is to measure your sign, and this one is 17. I don't have to be exact because of the design I'm using, by 11. So this is a 17 by 11 sign. Uh, I haven't decided if I'm going to use it horizontally or vertically yet. If you're doing a lot of words, instead of, uh, we're going to be doing a sea turtle today. But if you're going to be doing a lot of words that uh, you want to line up without being in these cracks, you will need to measure each board. This one is like 2 and looks like 5 eighths. Where the next one might be, two and seven eighths. So you'll want to measure each board, the length and the width, and mark those down. Uh, you'll get yourself a piece of paper and just write down what your measurements are. Um, that's the sign overall. And then you'll want your sign per board. But because I'm doing this to be look rustic and with a sea turtle on it, probably not any words if any at all. Uh, I haven't decided. If I do words, then I'll come back and, and do that. Um, but I'm going to look at my design first and see if I'm going to put any words on here. If I do, it'll probably be just one word like relax or something to that nature. So that's what you want to do to get started. Then you're going to move over to your computer and set up your design. 
So I'm going to go to the computer for this and then we'll come back to the camera in just a little while. Hi guys, it's April with Cricut Crafting and More. I've moved over to the computer from the camera. And now we are going to start our sign design. And we know from uh, measuring our sign that it is an 11 by 17. So we are going to go to shapes on our new project and insert a square. I'm going to come up here to the top. You can use your little blue button here and you can unlock it. And I am going to change the width to 11 inches and the height to 17. Because I think I'm going to do this sign vertically um, just because one, it's easier than doing all that rotating for you guys on camera and everything. Um, and I may change it. it. It doesn't matter until I've got my stencil cut and applying it to the board, which way we actually do it in here. Um, this is just going to be a little bit easier for me. So I've got that, and I'm going to lock that back because I don't want that to change. Now, I told you before, if you're going to be doing several... Um, words so that the, the cracks of your board um, fall in the right places um, and that your wording looks well, what you'll want to do is, if you're going to do that, insert more shapes. And I believe one of those, I'm just going to go with 2.5, two and a half inch, was a two and a half inch board by 17. So, we're you would make another square here, and you'll want both because you'll want to line this up and make sure that everything fits. I'm going to change these to a different color so that you can see them on camera a little bit better. Uh, let's do that one there, and let's make this one. We're just going to be working off of a light brown canvas. How about that? That, that you can see. But if you're going to do that, you would need to do that. If all of your boards are exactly the same, all you need to do is duplicate these. Um, and we're just going to say that they are, but usually they are not. They're off by an eighth of an inch or so um, on these cheapy little pre-made boards that you already get. But you can line those up in there, and they're probably closer to two and seven eighths or two and five eighths each. But you get the general idea. You're going to line these boards up, giving you enough space in between to compensate for the cracks that are in between each piece of wood so that you can line your words up accordingly because you don't want like the middle of an A to end up in this crack because then it's just going to look like an upside down V if there's no paint there in the middle to, because we are doing a dry brush paint on these signs. Um, you don't want the center of your letter not showing up. Some people it bothers, some it doesn't. So if it doesn't bother you, you could skip this step. But we're not going to worry with that today because if I use it vertically, most likely I can maneuver it around for my word to fit on there without hitting any of the boards because, like I said, I'll just do the one word like relax. Okay, and the next thing you want to do is get your image. Now you can get your image from design space. Um, we're doing a turtle today and my design space has decided it's going to be a little bit slow. But that's okay. It's better than design space too. But you're just going to go in and look for the the kind of turtle that you want to use, what kind of uh, overlay that you might want. We'll insert this one just to show you what, how we do that. So you would insert your image. Once it comes in you would position it and stretch it to fit your sign how you wanted to do. Uh, I would say you wouldn't use that underlayment there. Um, myself, I would probably select this and slice it just to get this piece here out of there. And this piece here out of there. You can delete them just to give it some abstract. Um, like I said, if you don't want to download the zip file that we're going to be using today, then you can do that. But we're not going to use that when we're going to go outside. So what I'm going to do is click on upload image. 
and then you can upload image again and now you're going to drag or drop your file here. I'm going to shrink that down so that we can see. And I have unzipped mine already, but we're going to do it again just so you guys can see. When you uh, go to the group files, you will see this Turtles file. You'll download it. I saved it to my desktop. You're going to go to wherever you saved it. So if you didn't save it on your desktop, you'll need to look in your downloads folder or wherever your downloads go to. That's where it's going to go. Um, so I'm going to right click on that and extract all. And I'm, if you'll see here, it's a destination and extract folders. This is where you tell it where to um, download. So if you want it to be easily found, you can do it on your desktop. You can do it in a folder that you've put on top of your um, desktop anywhere that you want to put it or you can even make a new folder here and put it in there you can label it your artwork or sign work whatever you want to do um, but I'm just going to save mine to my desktop and then I'm going to click extract and then it's going to show them to me I can close this window and look on my desktop and there they will be like I said it's probably not going to do it again because I've already done it so then you're going to open that folder, which is where we were, uh, and you're going to select which turtle that you want. Now, if it doesn't give you a preview, you may not have an SVG viewer or anything downloaded, so you'll want to make sure that you download um, one of those so that you can see your SVGs, or you'll just have to double click and open them and look to see which one it is. And for today and time purposes, I really love this turtle. I would really love to do that one. However, for time's sake of the video, I'm not going to go there today. But I'll probably make that one for myself. Today, we're just going to go with this one. It's just a basic little abstract turtle. And so I'm going to drag that over into my files. And you're not going to be able to drag your preview. You want to click on this one here and drag it over. Okay, and as a matter of fact, we can close that. I'm going to close that folder at the bottom there. Next, you're going to name it, and I'm going to call this Abstract Turtle. And then for my tag, I'm going to put Turtles and maybe Turtles, because you never know when you're searching plural and we're going to save it and there it is it'll your uploaded image will always be here first so I'm going to select that one and I'm going to insert the image and that came in a little bigger I didn't really mean to save it that size but that really looks good it came in almost perfect to my sign size I think I might size him down just a little bit just to give me some play on that edge now you can do welcome on here you can do relax but you can see I have a large area here with nothing um, let me duplicate that turtle let me see if I can how I like this I may I think I may do that there I haven't decided yet let's see how it looks when we get a word in there so now I'm going to add some text in, how about the word relax? And I think I'll do that in all caps. All right. And now to find the font, because I really don't like that. That's not working for me. So I'm going to go up here to the top with my box selected down here. It's going to give me the option. And... I don't know if my Aruna will work in here, but this is a font that I got somewhere I really like. Some of my fonts have not been working in Design Space 3, and some have, um, but we're going to try it. Um, let me see. No. And if your font's not working, you may, this is what may happen to you. This is a downloaded font. Let me try the rounded. 
we have a workaround, so it's not a big deal. I, but I know I really do want to use that font. So I'm going to X that out. And I'm going to go back to my desktop. Let me minimize that. And I have Font Lab Pad. I will leave you a link for Font Lab Pad. And right now you may not be able to see this because, let me see if I can open a file and get that to show. Um, it, has, it has a clear background, so sometimes they don't show. I'll just pull in Magnolia Sky here. Now you should be able to see it. That is uh, something that I had on there before, so how about relax? Uh, it'll always open with your last. I really like that one. Let me go to open install and see all my fonts. And how about Aruna? It's going to search. There we go. I don't want the dirt. The Aruna font has a lot of different variations. And I just want the rounded regular. There we go. And say OK. Uh, and it's because I had something in there. Let me just open that up again. And edit. I'm sorry, file, open, installed. Let me go to my Aruna. Rounded regular and say OK. For some reason, it's not liking my Aruna font. So I guess maybe I will go with the Magnolia Sky. I like both of them, so let's just go back. I apologize for that. I'm going to have to probably reload that font. I don't know what happened to it. I was thinking it was Design Space, but evidently it isn't. So let me go back and put Relax in there. And it looks like they have moved the box um, to... Uh, there it goes. Looks like it was at the top there for a moment. It was coming up way at the bottom down there. All right, I'm going to do my nice guy, so I want to do it in lowercase, not caps. I can't decide. I know you guys are probably having a hard time seeing that. Let me, it's still on Aruna. Let me go to Magnolia Sky. There we go. And there's our relax. However, we, you don't ever want your letters to look like this. They will look better um, bringing them in for font, from Font Lab Pad, but there is a way to do it in Design Space. So if you don't have Font Lab, and I'm going to show you that, we're going to go to Advanced and we're going to ungroup the letters. I am going to extend it and make it big, really big, because you don't want your tails to be inside that letter. If they're inside this letter at all, when you go to Weld, it's going to fill it in and we don't want to fill it in. But you always want these fonts. These are the way that they were meant to look from the designer. I'm going to bring that down to where that tail looks like it goes up into that L where it's supposed to. This font is made to look all jumbled up a little bit. But move all of your letters like you need them. Then you're going to select them all and attach. You never want those gaps in there. Your word just won't look as good. Uh, and the reason that I'm attaching right now is I want to see how it's going to fit in there. And I kind of like that. I think I'll move it up and unlock it. Stretch it out just a little bit bigger. Not really liking that R on there. And that's why we don't weld. Let me add text. Let me get an R. You might want to go with the capital R on this one just because of the way it looks. Let me detach that. I'm going to get rid of that R and bring this one in. Let's stretch it. Let me select. I'm holding control and just selecting each one of my letters. 
I'm going to attach those so I don't have to keep moving them individually until I can get this the way that I want it on this board. Kind of like that. Let's see. Did I just make, no, I did not make my side smaller. Let's tilt it a little. And the designing process is all going to be in what you like and what looks good on your sign. And remember, we're going to be doing some painting on this, so what you're thinking might be big blank areas is going to be pretty. It's not going to be just wood showing. I kind of like that like that. really liking that. I think that's, I'm going to go with that. So I'm going to select them both and I'm going to weld. Now that can't be changed and it's going to be interlocked. This will be separate when I do my stencil. Um, this, this piece will be separate. So you'll just need to be careful when you peel. And I'm going to make this smaller so we can get a good look at the whole sign together. Let me move this guy back over. And then I'm going to hide this image. Okay, so we need it again. I'm going to select all and I'm going to weld it. I don't need it to be separate. If I want to use it for a different project, I've uploaded it. I'll search for turtle and insert it into the new project. Um, so that's the design that I'm going to go with today. Let me unhide this background here and we'll line everything back up. And this just tells me it's a sign that I did. We're not going to be cutting that. All right. And you can hide that out of the way. You want to make sure you save your project. Remember, if you have an asterisk up here at the top, your project is not saved. So I'm going to name this the turtle relax sign. And I'm going to save it. I can't share this file with you guys. As you know, uploaded images are not shareable. So you, once you do this, you won't be able to. And I ask that you please don't share our group files. Um, and these are for your personal use. Um, if you uh, have a friend that wants the file, invite them into the group and the, let them get it on their own, okay? And now we're going to move back to the cutter, the Cricut. So I will be back on camera with you guys in just a few minutes. So you can click on your Make It and get ready to cut. And this, I'm going to need a larger mat. Okay. And you can cut this in pieces if you don't have a larger mat. Let me go back and do that. That may make this a little long, but let's close out of that. I didn't think about that. Now, I welded that, you guys know, and I saved it. Um, but I still have the option to undo because I have not closed this out. Once you close it out, you cannot unweld, but you can slice and get it off of there. And I'm just going to change those other two guys to a different color. Let's see. Is it still welded? Undo, undo. You want to undo until your weld over here disappears. Undo. And there we go. And as you can see, it unwelded. Now I'm going to select this one at the bottom and this one here, and I'm going to weld those two together. Because I am going to cut on a 12 by 12, just so you guys can see. Um, even if you have a larger sign, there are ways to do it. Um, as long as these two pieces are lined up, I can put place them anywhere on the sign that I want. If it's connected to this, I'm not going to be able to do that. So you might even want to do it in three and not weld these together at all. But I like the placement I had of that and I didn't want to lose that. 
So in order to get this to cut on two different mats, instead of trying to cram it onto one, sometimes it will do that. Let's see if it's gonna give me two mats or, yeah, it did. The old Design Space 2 would have tried to force that and tell me I needed a bigger mat. So that's ready to go and we're gonna click continue. I wanted to show you this as well, so I'm glad that I didn't go to the camera yet. Let me turn on my Cricut so that it recognizes the machine. And it's taking just a moment here. Let me go to custom on the dial. And then I'm going to change my material. I will be using Aura Mask, and I'll show that to you guys here on camera in just a moment. And I have already set it up in my custom materials. It's called Aura Mask 813. Um, let me go in, oh, there we are. I forgot they put this here. You can edit custom materials and you can add these settings in if you're using the Aura Mask. I prefer to use this for stencil material over anything else because one, it's easy to work with. Two, it's inexpensive. Three, it is made for stenciling signs like this and then and then tossing it. it. It's not for reuse. If you use vinyl, 631 or 651, I have found it will, one, pull up your paint if it's not fully cured, which takes two or three days uh, in some cases, depending on how wet the wood is, how wet the paint is, etc., uh, how much moisture is in it. And two, it can make these little cheapy signs splinter and pull up the lettering and, and the stuff that you just work so hard to do to get that sign to look perfect. Um, so if you don't want that, I suggest you get the Aura Mask, and I will leave the link up, Expressions Vinyl, that's one of our affiliates, um, and they sell this. Um, but you'll want to come in, and let me find my... 813 and I'll tell you what my settings are. I do use a deep cut blade and I'm going to show you guys that. I'm going to show you it cutting uh, so that you will know uh, it does work. It does not cut through and it's just not going to, I guess I passed it. Let's see. There it is. I used the Aura Mask 813 setting, is what I named it. My cut pressure is 150. I have multi-cut off, doesn't need to be multi-cut. I have the deep point blade in there. The reason I put that in there is so that my Cricut machine tells me to put my deep cut in there and, and reminds me. I cut my Oracle 651 on the same thing. If you look into the washi tape, if I can find that washi sheet. It is one of those settings, except it's a deep cut blade. Uh, I don't know exactly where they got that in there. There it is. There's, there, they've changed it. Um, they're at 139 and 149. And I believe that was working at one point they had changed it and the pressure was too much so it looks like they backed it off more but this was the original and it works the or mask is a little thicker than the washi tape so i'm going to suggest this it does not cut through to your backing you never want to cut through your backing on your vinyl your htv or um your aura mask you all you only want to cut the material itself so make sure you get your settings set up if you're using the Aura Mask. And then we're going to go to the camera now and show you guys exactly how we're going to do that. And let me click Done. And then we'll be ready to 
move this over and cut it. It's ready for the mat. Hi guys, I'm back and as you can see this is cutting um, and what I forgot to tell you guys is you can put a square behind these like we did the other for our, our sign if you're using the larger mat and the larger material. I suggest after you've welded your pieces selecting all and attaching it. That way you have a square box that will cut around your design and you won't lose as much material and it's much easier to weed. However, it's not necessary. Let me come over here and bring up another page and open it in there so that I can show you that while that's cutting over there. I'm just going to open this project in another page. Same project. If I were cutting this on larger material, and I should have done it on this piece down here, but I didn't, so I'm just going to cut mine with scissors. But once you have all of this, you can select all and attach. And as you can see, it all turned to one color. However, it's going to make e uh, weeding a little bit easier. You can also, like in between here, you can... Let me insert a shape, a score line. Take that score line. I'm going to flip it. I don't have that quite straight, but you get the general idea. You can stretch it across like this, and then go into your layers panel and change it to cut. And now that will put a cut line across, you'll have to attach it of course, um, that puts a cut line there for you so that it makes it easier to peel away the excess because I'm doing my sign, uh, the one that was in the picture that Heather showed me, the turtle was white and then the background was blue. I'm doing mine reverse. I want my turtles to be the color and I want the white to be my accent, not my focal. So I am going to be peeling away all of this excess and only leaving the design itself and the word. All right, and let's move back over. That's finished cutting. Let's go back to the camera. Hi guys, it's April. I just wanted to show you guys a couple more things before we get started. You're going to need the Aura Mask. I don't know if I showed that to you in the previous video, but I'm gonna show it to you again if I did. Um, but this is what you want. This is the material that I use for my signs. Um, I like to use products that are intended for its use and it's intended to be a stencil material. This is the Blue Grid Transfer Tape, medium tack. Most every one of your vinyl places will sell this. Um, it is the best transfer tape I have ever used. I've used it with glitter vinyl, with 651, with 631, with the Aura Mask. 99.9% .9 of the time I never have a problem and usually when I do have a problem it's user error. But this is the best. It doesn't have anything on the back. It's just plain but it's just called Blue Grid Medium Tack Transfer Tape. Some people will try to use contact paper, things of that nature. It will make your wood splinter. It will peel your paint up. It will on occasion leave a residue on your vinyl, etc. Contact paper was not ever intended to be used as a transfer tape for vinyl. Just saying that, some people do it, don't have a problem at all, ever. Every time I've tried it, I've had a problem. So, I don't recommend it. I do recommend these, and I will give you the Expression Vinyl um, link for that. All right, and now let's move over to the cutter so I can uh, show you guys um, this cutting with the deep cut Okay guys, I'm back. We're over here at the Cricut and just to show you, I do have my deep cut blade in my housing and I am going to open up the B clamp, remove my regular housing blade. We're going to store that away and I'm going to drop in my deep cut and close that clamp back up. The light is flashing. It's ready for its mat. And I may have to move this camera back just a little bit so that you guys can get in there. Let me adjust so that you guys can see. 
we're going to load our mat and then we are going to press the cut I cut two sizes and I have something stuck behind my cutter there I forgot about uh, we're cutting two sizes here the first one is the big turtle with a 12 by 12 sheet and then I also cut a smaller sheet that is a 6 by 12 sheet for the lower half and I know that will work simply because the overall design is only 11 by 17 so I have my 6 inch piece here and you can see that this is cutting and once it's cut I'll be back with you guys I just wanted to show you how it cuts with the deep cut blade we'll pull it out and I'll show you about the weeding and the next step in this okay guys as you can see I've cut my little rope off of here because I'm not reusing mine again and I didn't want to fight with those staples they have this particular sign was in there extremely tight they're not normally like that um, but I have my sign ready to go I've decided which way I want it to go I want the rougher side over here to the right uh, this is strictly preference whatever you prefer I don't mean to bump the camera I apologize and I have peeled my stencils from the mat and as you can see sometimes you'll get these little air bubbles and lifting it's no big deal you see how easily that came off some of this can probably be weeded without a pick but I don't recommend it um, but you're just going to weed out the unwanted areas and on this one we're going to have a large unwanted area because I didn't put that square on there like I was showing you but you want to peel gently because this material is easy to work with and if you just go pulling on it you might pull up some of these little pieces that you need because they will lift off of there easy and that's good because we're going to be using transfer tape and we want it to easily move this stuff is just super easy to work with you just have to take your time see how easily that tore right there you just want to take your time so that you don't tear any part of your design but again the material is extremely extremely easy to work with and that one is already weeded now we're going to do the big one if I can find my trash can here a lot of area on this one too I like to start in the corner just to get it lifted up and then I'm going to peel it back slowly making sure I don't pull any of my design with it you can cut this or tear it don't let it stick back onto your design uh, just to make it easier to work with and like I said it tears easily but you see I cut this with the deep cut blade the deep cut blade everybody has a misconception that it's going to cut deeper into the material and that's not true the angle of the blade is a 60 degree angle and that 60 degree angle so when you have a thicker material your 60 degree blade sits like this whereas your German carbide sits like this and you you're just using more of the tip of the blade so when you have those thin materials it's just using the tip but when you put a thicker material in there it's using the back of the blade and the tip so that's the difference in the deep cut and the German carbide the pressure are usually the same um, but you can see this didn't cut through I had one little area right here that did cut through and that's probably my mat I mean that's rare it very rarely happens uh, but that when I used my German carbide blade on the settings for washi tape it cut through all over the place I went to the deep cut and that stopped like I said that's rare didn't happen at all on this one so um, but that's using the deep cut next you're going to want to apply your stencil and you can use registration marks by putting in a little star on each corner so that you get that straight and leveled um, but for something small like this I don't use them I it's really not needed because I'm gonna have a grid on my transfer tape 
and I'm going to cut this at about 11 inches in each square is an inch and it's reusable but for time's sake I'm just going to go ahead and cut another six inch piece and then we can get that out of the way transfer tape love this love this and my paper's a little rolly, so we may have to work with it. I'm just going to set my sign out to the side here so we have a flat surface to work on. Let me set it down here. My transfer tape, I am going to lift at the corner. I apologize. There we go. Sometimes I have trouble, sometimes I don't. And pull it back. And then I'm going to fold so I have enough to work with, but not enough to get myself into trouble. And then I'm just going to, as you can see, I'm holding this corner up with this finger and I'm supporting it at the back with my other finger. I'm holding this rolled up down so that it remains still and I'm just going to place it on the design and then I'm going to rub it down. I'm just going to gently pull this straight back and let it lay. That's how easy that is to get that on transfer tape. Extremely easy. I'm burnishing this with a scraper, like I said before, just so you guys know and see me do it myself. You can use your Cricut scrapers. This is the big one. You can use the small one. Just be careful because these are thinner and they're not as flexible as the squeegees you get from the vinyl shop. Uh, most all of the places where you buy vinyl online will sell them. But if you press hard and you come up against the raised area of your stencil, you can rip this transfer tape. And that can damage your design to where it won't stick. Then you'll come over to the back and you'll burnish it as well, just as hard. But that's all there is to that. That one is ready to go. And I'm going to do the large one just so you guys can see how I do that one as well. This one's a little trickier because it's larger. Usually helps if you have extra hands. But I'm just going to pull back a small corner on this one. Because I don't have anyone here to help me. And then I'm just going to stick down that small corner. Well, I said I was. I didn't do enough for it to stick. This is a medium tack, and it, it doesn't seem to be very sticky, but it's stickier than you think it is. And I'm just working that, I'm just kind of pushing back on this and working it, and then the backing is gone, and we're ready. No, Not a lot of air bubbles or anything under there, and I just find that the easiest way to do it. It takes practice. Don't get discouraged. Start with smaller designs if you want. You can larger designs to me sometimes are easier. So we're just going to burnish that down. So now our stencils are ready to go. The sign, like I told you before, I'm doing mine different than the picture. In the picture, they painted their sign white and then went back with a color uh, over the top and then removed the stencil so that the turtle was white. I am reversing mine. I want my turtle to be the color and the word to be the color and I want white to be the accent. Um, let me... I forgot my little dishes for my paint and I do use these. Uh, any little bowl. You can even use... I have used my backing. I flipped my backing over and tore or cut a piece where it laid flat, put my paint on my backing and used it from there. I'm going to be using the Award Blue. I'm just going to 
and that's probably more than enough paint and then I am using the Tuscan teal not going to be needing that yet maybe I might need a little bit and I'll show you why I'm just going to put a little dab in there and then like I said I don't have a sink in here I turned my dining room into a craft room so I have a little bit of water there I'm just going to get this damp you don't want it wet 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 you just want it almost dry you can see the dry areas in it you just want it damp and I wipe off my sign to make sure I don't have any I got a little paint there you see how it just washed right off um, I just want a little make sure I get any debris or dust or dirt off of the sign all right next I'm going to and if my husband was here he would just squirt the paint straight onto the board um, that makes it easy for him uh, he used to be a painter uh, for many years and did so many faux finishes and stuff that it's second nature to him and then I'm just dipping that into water and basically I'm creating a stain for the wood and I'm using like I said the two different colors and dip it in a little water because I want that varying tone as you can see it's bluer in some areas the camera may not pick all of this up but it's bluer in some areas and greener in others and how you put this on, how thick you put it on, is totally up to you. If you want more color, go for it. Um, I just want mine to be a little, like a stain. Subtle. Like I said, that was probably more than enough paint. And you can see I went with more teal there and just I'm going to go back with a little bit of the blue. And I'm getting it on my hands but it doesn't bother me. I'm not worrying about going inside these cracks where the boards join. I like that look. If you want to get in there and you're doing full coverage, you'll of course want to take a brush and go in there and paint. than I want right there. Don't be scared to mess up. I messed up a couple of signs and turned them out and sold them or gave them away as a gift. Nobody even knew I messed it up. And I mean messed it up bad. Had to sand it. Whole nine yards. Um, couldn't get all of the white paint off of it. So I turned it into a distress sign. And it came out beautifully. And you can see that picture of the one I messed up. It's the home sign in our group photos. Uh, with the coordinates on it. I messed that one up really, really really big. It originally said family, but nobody knows. And that is looking pretty good to me for what I'm going for. And you, the white will give it a little bit of a whitewashed look. I'll put a little dab. I don't want much, but you can go in and lighten up areas to give it that weathered look. Do that on the edges. And if you get it too light, not a big deal. Come back with some more paint. Or take your extra cloth, damp, and wipe it away. Now we're going to let this sit and dry for a little bit 
I'm going to add a little more white on the other areas of my sign just so that it matches and gets that weathered look. And I'll be back in just a little bit to show you guys how to do the stencil. Hi guys, I'm back. Uh, I used a hair dryer to dry this and get it pretty dry. Um, but you'll want to wait a couple of hours and make sure yours is really dry. If you want to dry it with a hair dryer, um, then you can, you're can. you more than welcome to do that. And uh, But just make sure that it's dry. It doesn't feel damp to the touch anywhere. And I think I've got mine all over, but I may not. Now you notice, if I peel this, it's not, my vinyl is not sticking to it. I can burnish all day long with a lot of strength same thing's going to happen over and over and over it's a lot of the typical mistake a lot of people make burnish yours from the back burnish it very hard um, and then pull your backing away from the tape and if it lifts up in any area just push it down and just keep this flat against itself and peel. And like I said, anywhere that it lifts up, this material is extremely easy to work with. You just have to play. Um, just force it. You're basically forcing it to come off by sticking it down to the tape itself. Because if you see when I push on that, how it released from the backing, I just push on it and it releases itself um, and it'll fold itself back but just go slow roll that one back up there we go sometimes I roll it too far and it won't pop off but just gently peel everything back And I'm doing this live on camera here for you, just so you can see all the little tips and tricks that I do. I don't just go in there and snatch the backing off. I've seen some people do that. You'll ruin your design. If they say that they've never had a problem, they're not telling the truth, I'm pretty sure. Because, I mean, if they've never lost a piece of vinyl doing that... I'm amazed. And that's just about it for this one here. And this one is going to be ready to put on the board. And there is that design and it's stuck. It's not going anywhere. Next, we're going to position it on the board and I'm following my grid lines because I know my grid lines are what I had set up I have an extra inch I forgot I cut this at 11 and I mean at 12 and my board was 11 so I'm gonna compensate for that and I'm just gonna give it a little bit of an edge here and a little bit of an edge here and from the center and work out. And then I'm going to burnish this down. For this part, I do like the hard scraper, but like I said, be careful. Don't catch the edge of your design. Keep it at a 45 degree angle so that you're not catching anything. And let that sit for a minute, and then we're going to apply this piece. Again, well, sometimes you'll see some pieces, but the rest won't. That's why I prefer to burnish it from the back and peel the backing off. To me, it just seems to work a little bit better. And you can just wiggle it and rock it. The, the little pieces will come off. They'll stay on the tape in position. 
I'll just give it that little rocking motion. Now here we're starting our letters. Don't try to, I hit the camera again. Don't try to fight it. There, I left part of my letter in there. I'm going to grab that, get that out of there. Always double check your letters and your weeding before you paint. Make sure that there's nothing in there that's not supposed to be in there because it, it's harder to touch it up than it is to check it. Okay, and now we're done with that piece. And I'm going to save those because I can reuse my transfer tape. I'm just going to match this up to the other grid and I've got everything in position like I wanted it. You'll notice I lined this grid up to that grid because they were the same on the when I welded these two together they were the same width as the, the other trailer. And we're just going to burnish that down. it some good pressure and you notice as my R is ending up there so it's giving me the tail ending up here that looks good that lined up really well and it tried to catch right there and that's what I said it will tear your transfer tape if you catch on there peeling the transfer tape and I am getting a little bit of my paint, not much. Not a big deal because I did want some wood shiny, uh, showing through. Very easy to touch up. Peel it flat against itself. Everything should stay. If not, you're just going to push it down like we did when we were peeling the tape. And that is done. I'm going to place my transfer tape back on. And you can see it didn't lift much of the paint. Just a little teeny tiny bit, which is giving it that weathered look. Not a big deal for me. You can always add more uh, on here. Very gently, make sure this is pressed down. As a matter of fact, I didn't show you guys this before, and you might want to get a tennis ball. But just rubbing it gently with a tennis ball to burnish down all of those edges. Don't worry about these and the cracks. You just want to get it up to that point. You can press it down if you want. Not a big deal. I just want to make sure that it's sealed on this edge. I don't care about this and the crack. I want this area here sealed. I don't know if you guys can see that. The blue stencil material is hard to see against this blue, but maybe you guys are seeing it. Um, I hope I've got the camera at an angle that you can see it. And I'm just kind of going over that and burnishing it down with a tennis ball so it doesn't catch the edges of the stencil. And mine is probably peeling up a little bit of this color because I didn't let it wait a couple of hours uh, before I put my stencils on there. But if you're using contact paper or anything like that for your transfer tape, that's going to be a whole lot worse than this. And again, it just brings out a little bit of the color in those cracks and gives it that weathered look, which is what I'm going for on this sign, so it's perfect. If you're doing a pristine sign, you'll probably want to touch up those little bit of areas. And again, I'm just going to burnish this down with a tennis ball. Okay. Let me... Get my dry brush 
and I am going to cut this into about four pieces. I don't need a piece that large for this of my rag material. Again, you can get these at Lowe's, Home Depot, your local paint shops, Sherwin-Williams, things like that. They all have them. Okay, and I don't want this one wet. You might want to have a damp one set to the side, just in case you have any little boo-boos. Now, what I would recommend, um, if this was solid, a solid paint color, and say it was a solid blue, and then you were going over it with white, I would recommend taking your makeup sponge and dipping it into your blue paint and go around every one of these edges. And I'm not going to do it with this because I did mine as a sort of a stain. But you'll do all these edges. That way, if you have any bleeds, it will be the same color as your background. And they won't show. It's kind of like sealing the edges. Some people have used Mod Podge for that. Don't do it. Every time I've done it and when I peel my stencil, it peels that paint. It creates a huge mess. Mod Podge is just glue. You're just put, it's like putting Elmer's glue on top of your wood sign. Humidity, everything else is going to get to it. Uh, they do make an outdoor. I haven't tried the outdoor. I personally would not use Mod Podge on any of my signs. I tried it three times. All three times it was a disaster. I've done it thin. I've done it thick. I did it medium. You can't get much thinner than what I'm about to do. It just didn't work. But like I said, if you've got a solid background, or you can even, in this case, you could even take um, a, a sponge and squeeze it out, have just a little bit of the blue paint watered down, and go over these edges, but then you might get a heaviness. So I don't recommend it if you've done a stain technique like this one. Um, but if you've done a solid paint, yes. Take your paint color that's the same color as your background, dab around all the edges to prevent any bleeding. Or if the bleeding that does happen will be minimal and in the same color. Next, that little bit of white paint that I put in this dish was about the size of a dime. Those other blues I had way more than I needed. But I just dipped this chip brush in there. And then I'm wiping off the excess on this rag. And then I'm dry brushing over this entire sign until I get the heaviness and what I want. If you're doing this and it's wet, you're going to cause bleeding. You're going to push it up under the stencil. You never want to brush a stencil unless you're dry brushing like this. And you'll add paint as needed till you get, like I said, the heaviness of the sign that you want. I don't have hardly any paint in there. Once you get down to hardly any paint in there, drying it off isn't really necessary. I mean, there's literally nothing in there. I can see the bottom of the dish. Don't worry about this being even. It isn't meant to be even on a weathered sign like this. Going to need a little more paint than what I put in there. That was what I had in from earlier. Not about the size of a dime or a nickel in there. Always, always brush it off when you first put, see how that was globbed? I don't know if you guys can see that, but it was a big glob on there. Didn't want that on my sign. But I'm just dry brushing. If you get heavy in an area while it's still damp, can take the damp towel and go over it and then go back and I used there we go and trust me it's going to look different it doesn't look like it's that much different but it will be
And I'm probably going to do this in two or three coats on this. Depends on how heavy you want yours. I think I want it a little heavier than that. So I really like the way that this was coming out down here. Almost basically hiding my stencil. Just to get a good cover on it. enough paint still on your drying rag that you you can use but I'm basically going to keep going over this until I get it to like this one here where it's pop that stencil is starting to pop out where I can see it like I said just hardly any paint at all that's a little heavy. Let me have a place that missed the brush, but that's okay. Getting dry in the bowl again. It's going to give me that heavier look in the areas for the weathered boards. I'm going to turn this around so I can get it on camera and get this last board here. Because I am right-handed. And just a touch more paint. And I dripped some right on the sign. Did you see that? Not a big deal. Wipe it off and then just dry brush over it. And you can do these in any colors that you want. These are just the colors I chose for this. I wanted a really beachy, weathered look since we were doing the turtle. And that's basically all there is to that. Next, we're ready to peel the stencil. Let me get rid of these out of my way. So we have room to work. Next, you're just going to come in. And I suggest just checking your stencil. Pull it up a little bit and check and see if you've got enough contrast. And I do. So I'm good. I'm going to go ahead and peel mine. And it's as simple as that. Just peel it. And I'm not going to have you guys stand here and watch me peel this. And I'll be back in just a moment. Okay, I just wanted to bring you guys back so that you could see that I haven't done anything to the sign while I was off camera. I was just peeling all of those tiny, tedious pieces. And now I'm peeling off the word. Um, just be careful when you're peeling, like I gouged mine right here with my weeding tool. It's not bothering me. Um, I could put a little dab of the stain over there where that happened, but again, I'm going for the weathered look and it doesn't bother me. Uh, but if you're looking for perfection on it, then you'll want to touch that up if that happens to you. And I'm just going to peel this A and the X off of there. And I am not going to seal this sign. I am going to tell you guys what you need if you're going to be indoors or outdoors and you do want to seal it, um, then you'll know to use the correct product. 
Everything I used on here was an acrylic water-based paint. Um, but there you have it. Uh, it. It turned out great. I'm happy with it. I'm not going to do anything else to mine other than put the rope on there for hanging. But if you're going to... I should have gotten these out beforehand. If you're going to seal... I suggest polycrylic. This is a matte finish. It comes in a matte, a satin, and a gloss. All of them will have a little bit of shine. This one will have less shine than any, uh, but it will have a slight shine. It won't be much. Um, satin is going to be like tables, coffee tables, your kitchen cabinets, things of that nature, and then extremely gloss, the, uh, like a photo, a glossy photo, is going to be your gloss in that. That is for indoor. If you're doing, this sign is going to be outdoors, you'll want to use a spar urethane. This is for indoor, outdoor. This is not water cleanup. It can go on top of this. This cannot go on top of this. So if you're if you're doing your sign for outdoors and you're sealing it first and then you're going to put this on there, the paint won't penetrate because this is will seal out the moisture. Um, so just remember, you can put oil on top of water. You cannot put water on top of oil, basically. That's how that works. Um, but if you're going to do vinyl and leave it outdoors, seal it with this then put your vinyl on, you're done. You don't have to seal vinyl. It will peel up. Vinyl is not meant to be sealed. So the, the technique is basically the same with vinyl signs. It's just a little bit different. My next one, I will do vinyl to show you guys how to do that. Uh, if you want to do it before I get a video out, message me or ask me on the Facebook group. I will be happy to give you the instructions on doing vinyl signs uh, for indoor and outdoor. But this sign is basically finished. Like I said, I'm going to use my staple gun. I'm going to put my rope hanger on the back. And this one is finished. Um, you can use one of the little metal hangers back here as well um, instead of the rope. But if you have any questions, anything, please be sure to uh, come to the Facebook group and ask me or uh, go to the website and, and use the contact me. I'll be happy to help you out in any way that I can. If you like this video and this tutorial, please subscribe below. If you're not a member of the Facebook group, come on over and join us. We have lots of projects from paper to signs and you name it. Uh, it's a group for everybody on everything. Uh, thank you for watching and you guys have a wonderful, wonderful crafting day.